This week we are in Havelock, New Bern, Moorhead City, North Carolina. <laughs> we get around. We do. And we're hanging out with Michael and Shelley from our Epic yeah. Adventure again this week. Well, for this couple weeks. Yep. And uh, still lots to see, even though the road has got some stuff shut down. Plenty to see. Yes. So here we go. Across the street from us is the birthplace of Pepsi. Yes. What you can't see is there's a dude working in an office building up here. I just saw him take a drink of Coca-Cola. <laughs> He's working in the office building above the, work, the birthplace of Pepsi, yeah. which is pretty funny. <laughs> but let's go see That's the uh, birthplace funny. of Pepsi. Okay. All right. Today we're at the old burying ground in Beaufort, North Carolina. Yes. It's creepy. It is creepy. But and it's in tradition that we it's what we do. find we an old cemetery. Cemeteries. And there's what? Confederate or Civil War? Civil War. Revolutionary sure. War and War of eighteen twelve. People all buried here. Mm hmm which is really cool. Yeah. And they have little numbers on the the graves that have significant meaning and then they have pamphlets, but the pamphlets are all gone, but you can download the Got pamphlet on. online. So if you come to the old burying ground, um, pull up that and then it'll talk you through the- Self-guided tour. Yeah, talk you through the numbers and who are, who's buried there and yeah. what significance they have on either this community or the world yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. So let's go see some more of the graves. All right. All right. This is quite creepy. This is the grave of Vienna Dill, and she's on the list of interesting uh, people that are buried here. And she died of yellow fever and was buried in a glass top casket. And they said that vandals dug up the casket and opened it up, and apparently the body disintegrated when they opened the casket. So I don't know what part of that's the creepiest. But it's all pretty creepy, and so it's got the little little baby with the little. Somebody put a little duck there, but um, man, creepy. Died in 1865, yellow fever. All right, so this one's really cool. This is Sarah Gibbs, and this is her first husband Jacob, who was a sailor, and he was out sailing. on a ship sailing, <laughs> and so the ship was lost. He was presumed, presumed to be dead, shipwrecked. gone, whatever. So she marries some dude named Gibbs. And so many years later, up turns Jacob back up, yeah. alive and well. And somehow the guys decided that, okay, they she can stay married to you. But after everybody's dead, she spends eternity with me. Yeah. I don't know what the other dude's at. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably him right here. <laughs> he's like the, th he the third wheel now. He's like over here. These guys are hanging out. So yeah. But that's that's pretty interesting stuff because it's like um, it's like um, Castaway, yeah, the movie, you yeah. know, where he goes and he comes back and then all of a sudden like oh, already married, sorry, chief, yeah, but you get to lay dead next to her, so it's a consolation prize, yeah.
This dude was in the Union Army. He switched over to the Confederate Army. Union Army hanged him for it. The end. So this is pretty cool too. This is actually a British naval officer who, when he was killed, requested to be buried standing up. So they had to dig a super deep hole. Well, depending on how tall he was, because he had to be buried upright and he had a casket with the, the, the glass front. And he is actually standing facing Britain, which is actually this direction somewhere. And he's actually still saluting, standing up. So saith the, the myth and the legend. But it's still pretty cool whether it's true or not. This is Dr. James Hunt. He was a surgeon in the War of 1812 and was really super unique about this guy is not only that he fought in the war of 1812 and he was a surgeon in the military but he got married wrote his will and died on the same day <laughs> sounds insane. a little fishy to me i don't see his wife anywhere <laughs> so i think she just ghosted out with all the money on the day they got married he wrote his will and died this is the story of a little girl who was buried in a barrel of rum her family was from London. They moved to the United States. She had never been able to visit her homeland, so she finally convinced her mother to let her take the voyage back to London. So her father took her to London and promised to bring her back home safely. Well, she had a great time in London, uh, visiting the homeland, and on the way back home on the voyage home on the boat, she died. Not real sure how she died, but she died. And normally, they would just bury those folks at sea because the embalming process back then was not great and you're on the boat for months headed back from London uh, but he didn't want to do that he knew that the mother would be very distraught so he wanted to bring her back even though it wasn't going to be safely uh, so he bought a barrel of rum from the captain of the ship put her body in the bottle of, in the barrel of rum to preserve her and brought her back here and now it's one of the most popular graves that people visit here and you can see they leave all, all kinds of little things here for her and so that is the story of the little girl who was buried in the barrel of Rome. Today we are at the Core Sound Waterfowl Museum. Nailed it. I'm assuming that we are going to see and learn about waterfowl. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> we have these Tell weird, them what is one, yeah. Chuck. <laughs> these weird people keep following us around, too. It's crazy because... Can't like, shake them. We keep digging and zagging, <laughs> and, and then they just keep, they just keep following us around. Like, this guy is just creeping on me all day. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we're trying to enjoy the waterfowl, uh, yeah. and these weirdos keep okay. following us around. I didn't want to say anything right in front of them, <laughs> getting a little awkward. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go see some waterfowl. All righty. <laughs> Smell it? What? it smells a little foul. <laughs> <laughs> the corny jokes today. Yeah, this, this is a pretty cool place because yeah. uh, it's really small, but all the, the decoys. I can see where, why they're award winning decoy makers. These things look like real birds. They do. And they're like hand whittled. 
mm. hand painted. But they the stuff, look like real feathers. Yeah. It's crazy. I can't even imagine how many hours. Hours is spent on that. Yeah. Goes into making a decoy. Oh my gosh. And then yeah. they they made these not just for decoration they were functional they yes. used them for duck Actual hunting decoys. so you spend all this time you whittle this whole chunk of wood down you paint all the feathers and all that stuff and then you shoot it accidentally because the ducks land there and you shoot your decoy and then you gotta spend another 40 hours making another duck <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Say back. Today we are. Today, Leslie is going to tell us where we are. Because <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> what is it? It's the Battle of Newport Barracks, Civil War Memorial Park. That's a lot of words. That's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> the inside um, museum is closed, yeah. but they do have the outside displays, so we'll take you along. Where? Because <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> Battle of Newport Barracks, Civil War Memorial Park. What she said. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Well, that was um, fast. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot to it, but That's some cool stuff. That's a cute stuff. little. It gives you the layout of what the, the the camp looked like. Yeah, and I have no idea any of the history of the Battle of Newport okay. Barracks, so I have to look that up. Well, you could read the plaque. Or <laughs> <laughs> read. Read. Crazy. I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna YouTube that thing. Yeah. Somebody will tell me. Yeah. Gotta they read. Will. <laughs> See, I mean, if the inside was open, it'd probably take a little then longer. Then we could get to know the history better. About 15, 20 minutes. You can walk around and see everything yeah. outside. Uh, today we're at the Lejeune Memorial, and uh, there's a bunch of different stuff out here. Yeah, a couple monuments. Um, Vietnam stuff. There's uh, yeah. World Trade Center piece of iron from yeah. or steel. From the World Trade Center, there's like a, uh, a see-through, like Vietnam wall, but it's yeah. glass. Uh, I haven't been over there yet, but um, a bunch of cool stuff. This really is right neat. outside of Camp Lejeune, mm -hmm. yeah, in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina, and uh, but there's a lot of um, hurricane damage out here too. Yeah. The hurricane just went through, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it looks like a really nice park. Yeah, once they pretty. get the uh, branches and stuff cleaned up from the hurricane, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll go around the park and we'll show you all the cool uh, monuments that they have for the uh, service members out here. Okay. All right.
This is insane. This is crazy beautiful. Yeah. Never seen anything like it. We've been to a couple of different Vietnam walls. Yeah. Nothing, anything like this ever. No. It's all glass. It's almost in a complete circle. A to Z goes all oh, the way around yeah. with the fountain in the middle and American flags going around all of the glass. This is probably one of the most beautiful, beautiful representations yeah. Vietnam things yeah. ever. Yeah. So if you're close to Camp Lejeune, come you out here. You definitely see this. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Just seeing that sparkling glass, you know, that everybody yeah. thinks. It's very Crazy. cool. It's a very um, fitting tribute yeah. for, our, for our Vietnam veterans that, it, that fell in battle. Told you there'd be plenty to see. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Doubters. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a little challenging to find stuff to do in the current worldly situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we're managing. We are. Yeah. We are. And it's a little disappointing that some things are closed, but... A lot of cool things here are closed. Yeah. But the little towns have are closed, so... It is true. Because they do have, like, the little museums. Yeah. Like, that are indoor stuff. Mm -hmm. Aquariums. Stuff that are very specific to, to this area. To this region. Yeah, so... That's been the challenge here. Yeah. But the out outside stuff has been has been great. It's yeah. been fun. I just wish some of the inside stuff would have been open. But it's yeah. been really cool mm -hmm. hanging out. And we did get to see a lot of stuff. And we were here for two weeks, so we, we really got to see... Almost everything. Right. That we can. Yeah, that we can. Yeah. <laughs> We're headed inland a little bit. We're going to head into Fayetteville by Fort Bragg and then into Charlotte area yep. for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and back out to the coast. Yes. So it's cut in, cut out. Beach time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we did hang out on the beach a little bit here, but not like beach day. No, we didn't make a beach day. Whether this past two weeks has been like typical summer Florida weather it where is. a storm is busting out every afternoon mm -hmm. so it's dampered being able to go spend a day at the beach yeah it really has and it's a it's a terribly timed storm yeah. every day yeah it's terrible because we normally will get up and we'll hang out for a little bit we'll eat our breakfast I'll do some editing and, and stuff online and then we'll have lunch and then we'll head out, head out. but for the weather here, that has not been great. No. You do all that stuff, then you eat lunch. By two o'clock, it's storming yeah, and it's, somewhere. And it's storming, here. so. Yeah. <laughs> and then when it's not storming, it's so hot. It makes it very humid. And humid. Yeah. You can just see the steam rising off of everything. It's as if they moved Florida up <sighs> to the Carolinas. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we know it's still gonna be hot for the next month or so. Yes. In this area, because it's just a hot area of the country. No, oh, yeah, and it's August. And humid. It's hot yeah. everywhere, but it's really humid here. Yeah. It's close to the coast. Yeah. But we had a great time here in, in Havelock, New Bern, Moorhead City <laughs> area. Yeah. It's a really cool little place. Yeah. Yeah. Even even if there wasn't a ton to do, it's just a cool place to be. Be. Yeah. I mean, just to just to be close to the water, the quaint little towns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool little places to eat. Mm -hmm. And um, lots of seafood places. So. Yeah. Glad we stopped here. The only reason that we really stopped here is because it was on a Marine Corps base and it was a little cheaper than other places. And it was, and it on, was our on our way down and, yeah. and kind of uh, stopped to kick back inland and kick back out. Yeah. So it's been fun. Yeah. And now we're headed um, headed in, like we just said. Well, we had fun. We mm -hmm. hope that you enjoyed watching and coming along with us in this coastal North Carolina area. Yeah. And like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye.